What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we are going to show you how to make a new project in Unreal Engine 5. So Unreal Engine 5 just came out and I just made a video about converting your old project from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5. If you wanna check that out, then I'll leave an icon in the top right corner right here. But if you wanna make a new project in Unreal Engine 5, I'll go through basically what to do and what kind of steps you should take for the type of game that you're working on. So, to get started, I have a few links in the description. They should help you uh, get to either the Epic Launcher, if you don't already have it, or get to Unreal Engine 5. You can just download early access right here. We have the Unreal Engine tab. And uh, once you do that, it, it will install and you can launch it from right here. Once you're able to launch your project, once it's done installing, then just hit launch. I'll do it right now. It will run and open up in a few seconds here. And then at this point, you can pick from all the projects that you've already worked on. As I've said, this would be if you were trying to convert a project or open a project from Unreal Engine 4 in Unreal Engine 5. But today, in this episode, we're going over um, launching a new project from Unreal Engine 5, creating a new one, and basically the steps you have to take. So it has changed a little bit since Unreal Engine 4, but it's, it's mostly the same. Basically, you have these different types, these different genres, if you will, of things that you can do. You have games, film, video, and live events, architecture, engineering, and construction, and automotive product design and manufacturing. So depending on what you're trying to do, like if you're trying to have some sort of configurator, you might want to have the photo studio here. If you're trying to work on a game, you might want to pick from one of these. So they have separated them up a bit. Now, since we mainly do gaming content over here, I'll focus on putting a game um, as the example. I think the third person template is usually a pretty good one. Any of them will work, but I think the third person is one of the the most used templates, so we'll go over creating that one. Now, here's your description on the right side, but the important part are the project defaults. They love moving this tab around every time they update Unreal. So sometimes it's a separate tab, sometimes you have to, you know, uh, like click next and then it pops up on its own. Right here, it's all on the same page this time, and the reason I'm bringing this up is Unreal Engine 5 Early Access just dropped today, so <laughs> there's a very good chance it will change in future versions. If it changes and it doesn't match with what I say in this video or show in this video, please let me know in the comments or message me. That way I can update it and keep the data up to date for all of you. Because I want to make sure that you guys are getting the proper information, and if I need to update anything, I do. Now in the project defaults, you have the type of project that you're making, either Blueprint or C++. It's important to note that either of them, um, you can add the other later. So say if you have a Blueprint, then you can add C++ to the project. Um, and you can add, if you have a C++ project, you can add Blueprints to the project. But this is basically how the template is going to come out, so how it's set up from the get-go. I usually do C++, so we'll do that. Target platform, desktop or mobile. So desktop, like if you're doing a computer or a console. Mobile, of course, if you're going for a phone or an app. Quality preset. Basically, um, what type of features are going to be available. Maximum would be the highest end features, some things that are going to be uh, very expensive for your computer to do. Starter content, if you want the things that come with Unreal 5 by default, or if you want all the assets to be custom made. And ray tracing, basically if ray tracing should be supported in the new project. I'm going to go ahead and enable that. And we'll call this, you can pick your project location here, and we'll call this default, or let's do sandbox UE5. I like to have a sandbox project where I can put whatever I want in, or test different features in, that way we can kind of get the hang of certain things within Unreal Engine. We're going to create. It's going to create the project. It'll be pretty quick. Take a few seconds here. Has to set up all the code, all the blueprints. And then it's going to try and build this, which it can fail. And if it does, you'll have to just open it in Visual Studio and manually build. That's perfectly fine. I'm going to show you how to do that regardless if it fails here or not. 
at 67% is when it's doing its build. So we'll take a few seconds here. And once you've done this, you'll have your project built. It will ask you a few questions about updating it or plugins that are available, just like when you're regular, regularly opening Unreal. The only difference in Unreal 5 so far is that it will automatically open everything for you when you get started. And I'll show you what I mean for that. So first of all, it opened uh, Visual Studio for me, which is standard. It's going to compile shaders, which will take a little bit of time, but at least it's keeping track of all that for you, so you can see. That way you don't think it's stuck on 45%. Alright, now this is going to compile in the background. That's perfectly fine. I'm going to go over what we need in Visual Studio. That way um, you can kind of get the hang of how to build and make work on your new project in Unreal Engine 5. So now that we made a new project with C++ capability, it will open Visual Studio as long as it can find your Visual Studio uh, file or your executable location. And you'll have the Solution Explorer on your right by default. So unless you moved it, it will be over here. You can right click on your, you'll have two solutions. You'll have UE5 and you'll have Sandbox UE5. Well, you'll have your project name. Click on your project name and just hit set a startup project. For me, it already was, but it is a good thing to check to make sure because if you try and launch UE5 the way I'm going to show you here, it's not going to work. We're going to want to launch our actual project that we have here. And for your these two tabs, solution configurations and solution platforms, we're going to want to make sure that they are certain things. So if we want to launch, if we want to be able to launch the editor through Visual Studio, we're going to want to have debug game editor or development editor. I usually do debug game while I'm working on it because I like to have all my capabilities. And then for window, uh, for your solution platform, I do Windows 64. That's pretty much the default, but it is just something that we should mention. Then, um, if you want to open up any of your projects, this is the same because uh, Visual Studio is the same. That hasn't gotten an update, so you just click the project name, source, project name again, and then open up the file that you want. So here's my default stuff for UE5. Say, Unreal 5, are you done yet? Not yet. Still got its tracker here. But you can go through and check out anything new that you want on here. It, it The way that Unreal uh, makes these files are now a little bit different than the Unreal Engine 4 files. You can see things have been made differently. So your your template, if you use the template with the C++, your C++ files are going to be slightly different than they were before. So maybe take it a second look. Take a second look and see if there's anything that you want to change. Or if you're like, oh yeah, I can use that. And this will be done before you know it. If you ever want to launch Unreal Engine through Visual Studio, which I highly recommend, it cuts down a lot of bugs that can pop up. Well, hopefully they don't pop up with Unreal Engine 5 anymore, but it hasn't been out long enough for us to know that. You can just press this little play button, local Windows debugger, and it will open the editor for you. It's already being opened since we just created the project, though, so you don't need to do that now. All right. And now once this completes, we'll be able to get the editor open. It'll open pretty quickly after this. It's going to fly through basically all the blueprint creation and then do the construction scripts and the constructors and code. And after that, you will be ready to go. All right, and then once the project is done, compiling shaders and all the things it needs, you'll get this up, and it will say, project file is out of date, would you like to update it? Even though we just created it, somehow it's out of date, but yes, you can go ahead and update it. It's still gonna be a little bit laggy because it's going to compile shaders within the engine as well. So give it a little bit more time. Once it is done, I'll go ahead and uh, resize this. There we go, it actually finished on time. I, I didn't know how long it was gonna take. So it's going to be building a bunch of stuff. 
and it is going to be laggy, but as soon as I can, I'll resize this uh, window for you, this tab, that way you can see the whole thing, and we are going to update this, and I'll leave you with a few extra notes once it is complete. All right, so after a little bit here, um, it has barely compiled anything, but it is stable now. So go ahead and click update. It will tell you that it's updated successfully, hopefully. Um, and then I need to do this. Oh, that got really tiny. There we go. That way you can see the whole thing. And there you go, guys. So we're pretty much good at this point. It'll still compile shaders for a little bit. It will take its time, but you can see that we have our new project set up. And it plays just like the UE4 project, of course, with all the changes that Unreal 5 has. But now you can start working on your Unreal Engine 5 project. So that's all I got for you today, guys. If it helped, please subscribe. It does more than more for the channel than anything else you can do. And I'm going to be pumping out a lot of Unreal Engine 5 videos. So if you're interested at all in that, it would really uh, help me. And I'd really appreciate it. Also, just wanted to mention that uh, if you had any issues with this or if there's anything you want to learn about Unreal 5, we have a nice Discord community that you can join and can be a part of. It's completely free and will help you with issues you have and just kind of, you know, talk about whatever uh, Unreal Engine or programming thing you're, you're interested in. Lastly, guys, I just want to say thank you so much to my YouTube membership and Patreon supporters. Thank you for supporting the series and the channel and everything. This is my passion. I really appreciate you doing that. So that helps me a ton, and I just want to thank you so much. So that's all I got for you today, guys. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, everyone.